Cirque du Freak, one night only. Go ahead in. Show's about to start. He's a vampire. Want to become a vampire? Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we are going to recapping the movie Cirque du Freak, The Vampire's Assistant. The film opens with a peculiar funeral for a man named Darren, who is actually alive and hidden beneath the coffin while his loved ones mourn his supposed death. From there, the story unfolds as Darren recounts how his life was going well. He was popular, his parents were happy, and he was doing well in school. However, his best friend Steve was a source of instability in his life. One day, while sitting on the rooftop, Steve displays his rebellious nature by crushing a spider and smashing light bulbs with stones. Darren joins in by throwing a stone and breaking a window, which leads to his parents scolding him and blaming Steve for his behavior. Darren's father then pressures him to focus on his studies, get a job, and start a family. Despite the persistent echoes in his mind, he manages to break free from their grip. The following day, Darren engages in a heated argument with Steve, recounting how his parents have coerced him into ending their friendship. Steve, devastated, accuses Darren of lacking the courage to stand up for himself or others. As they argue, a flyer for the Cirque du Freak, a peculiar freak show, is thrown from a passing car. Excited, they defy their teacher's warnings and venture out at night to attend the show. While riding their bicycles, Darren reveals his fascination with spiders while Steve is fixated on vampires. At the ticket booth, a hidden creature bites Steve's hand, causing him to retreat in fear and drop the tickets. Undeterred, they enter the building and are greeted by a tall man who collects their tickets and encourages them to proceed. Filled with curiosity, they take their seats among the crowd in the theater. As Mr. Tall takes the stage, the freaks of nature begin to make their appearances. The first to emerge is the Wolfman, a hideously reeking beast that scares everyone. Mr. Tall directs him to a woman whose arm gets bitten off by the Wolfman. As everyone screams in terror, the woman charmingly regenerates her cut-off arm and gets introduced as Korma Limbs. The next freak to come on is Alexander Ribs, who has no ribs. Gertha Teeth follows him with immensely strong teeth. Immediately after her, we witness Rahmas Two Bellies, who has actual two bellies. He engulfs everything and spits out a tricycle from his mouth. As he rides it away, the next freak comes out to be a snake boy who performs music, but his snake, Bippo, eats up the amplifier, so Mr. Tall sends him away. Afterwards comes the enchanting Madame Truska, who takes Darren as a volunteer. Her freakiness is then revealed as she suddenly grows a beard, but she envisions something about him and moves away. Nevertheless, she cuts it and retreats back. The next presenter is Larton Krepsley, who comes out with his spider, Madame Octa. He takes out the flute and they both dance together. But as Krepsley performs, Steve reveals that he's actually a vampire named Ver Horsten, and he saw his picture in a book. As Krepsley's performance reaches its climax, Octa, the spider, flies into the air and lands on Darren's lap, mesmerizing him. However, Krepsley takes it back just as the townspeople including their teacher, invade the place. Mr. Tall argues with them while Alexander scares them away. Darren takes advantage of the chaos and runs backstage to Krepsley's room where he steals the spider and hides behind a door. Krepsley enters the room with Gavner and they discuss the Vampanese becoming a threat after murdering their friend Vincent. Mr. Teeny, a fat man, is back and planning to destroy them all by messing with the Book of Souls. They must fight the Vampanese off but Krepsley says he has left that life and can't do it. Steve enters the room and reveals that he knows the truth about Krepsley. Gavner holds him by the neck, but Krepsley says to let him go. Steve confesses that he wants to be a vampire as there's nobody in his life. Because of his troubled family life, Darren finds solace in the vampire world. Krepsley initially agrees to turn him into a vampire, but changes his mind after tasting Steve's contaminated blood. This infuriates Steve, who storms out of the room. Gavner also says goodbye, and during all of this, Darren hides behind the door and is pursued by Krepsley, but he manages to escape and hitch a ride with two men who mistake him for Steve. During the ride, they question him about fate and the existence of souls. During it, the man named Murtauk simply considers him a bag of blood and eventually drop him off at his own house. The following day, Steve accidentally sets Darren's pet spider free, 
causing chaos as he tries to capture it. Eventually, the spider attacks Steve. As Okta bites his upper cheek, Darren watches in horror as Steve falls unconscious to the ground. Filled with guilt, he rides back to Krepsley, who offers him the antidote to the venomous bite on the condition that Darren becomes his assistant as a half-vampire. Despite his reservations, Darren agrees to the deal to save his friend's life. Krepsley tests Darren's blood and finds it suitable for the exchange. After the transfer, Krepsley orders Darren to climb on his back and they speed off to the hospital. They enter Steve's room and administer the antidote, saving his life. However, before leaving, Krepsley warns Darren not to harm his own family. As the days pass, Darren becomes increasingly energetic and even begins to eat raw meat from his fridge. Additionally, he is tempted to kill his sister, but just in the moment, he returns to his senses and moves away. Later that night, Krepsley appears in his room and Darren confides in Krepsley about his struggles. Krepsley advises him to fake his own death and leave his family. Darren agrees and spends his final moments with his parents before consuming a mysterious liquid. Krepsley breaks his neck, making it seem like Darren has died. At the funeral, Steve complains and leaves his phone in his hands. Krepsley digs up the grave and retrieves Darren, but senses another person in the graveyard. Murtauk appears and a battle ensues. Darren escapes with Krepsley's help, and they outsmart Murtauk, causing him to be hit by a truck. Following the defeat of the monster, Krepsley speaks with Mr. Tall at the Cirque du Freak about finding a safe place for Darren to hide from Mr. Tiny. While the two elders converse, Darren overhears their discussion and meets a girl named Rebecca. After getting to know each other, Darren confides in Rebecca about his situation, but their conversation is interrupted when Mr. Tall catches them and brings them before him. Despite this, Mr. Tall agrees to take Darren in and assigns Rebecca to be his roommate. On the way there, Rebecca hands Darren over to Harkat, a creature who tries to bite him but is stopped by Truska. Despite receiving a vision of the future, Truska allows Darren to continue on his way. Upon arriving at the tent, Darren meets Ever, a snake boy who lays down the rules and warns him to stay away from his recording studio. Darren agrees, and the two shake hands. Meanwhile, Truska confronts Krepsley about his sudden disappearance, but he manages to calm her down and explain his absence. On the contrary, Steve's behavior takes a turn for the worse, as he becomes increasingly aggressive and disrespectful towards his peers and teachers. He even goes as far as contemplating suicide, but is interrupted by the arrival of Mr. Tiny. The rotund man encourages Steve to pursue his dreams of world domination after the apocalypse and instills in him a sense of self-worth as a champion. Meanwhile, Darren adjusts to life at the camp by completing tasks assigned to him by Krepsley and practicing his flitting skills. However, his attempts at flying end in failure when he crashes into a signboard. As night falls, he observes the strange rituals of the freaks around the fire and has a heart-to-heart -heart with Evra, who considers the camp his family. Darren's thoughts turn to his own family and friends, prompting him to try and call Steve, but his efforts are thwarted by Krepsley. In the meantime, Mr. Tiny makes his way to the camp and is greeted by all the creatures who admire him. The focus then shifts to Mr. Tall's tent, where Mr. Tiny requests that they hand over the boy. Despite the intrusion, Mr. Tall calmly states that he will not make a hasty decision and needs time to consider what should be done. This brings the meeting to an end, and as Mr. Tiny departs, he instructs his creatures to keep a close watch on Darren. The next day, the small creatures follow Darren around the camp as he goes about his work and meets Rebecca at the costume store. Inside, Darren tries on new pants and inquires about Rebecca. In response, she reveals that she is a monkey girl and has a tail. As this truth sinks in, Darren walks away into the night and is joined by Krepsley, who takes him outside to test his strength and survival skills. Initially, Darren struggles to defend himself or cause any harm to Krepsley, but over time he begins to sharpen his reflexes. Krepsley suggests using his fingernails as a weapon, but it becomes apparent that Darren's abilities require significant improvement. On the other hand, Steve experiences a drastic change into a vampire under Murloff's influence. Together, they pay a visit to Steve's teacher's house and intimidate him. Eventually, Steve takes matters into his own hands and mercilessly kills his teacher, drinking his blood. Meanwhile, Krepsley takes Darren with him to feed on blood for strength in battle. 
Krepsley successfully sedates a farmer without harm and offers Darren the chance to drink, but his moral compass prevents him from doing so. Later, Krepsley confides in Truska about his initial need for Darren's help, but the situation has escalated. Suddenly, Krepsley senses the Van Pines have infiltrated the camp, causing fear among the freaks as they search for Darren. After an extensive search, they find him hiding with Rebecca and Evra in the costume room. A fight breaks out with Krepsley joining in to defend them. Eventually, Mr. Tall intervenes to stop the altercation. The Van Panese approach Evra and Rebecca to deliver a message to Darren, informing him that it's time to go home. The next day, Darren walks around the camp and is met with disgusted stares from everyone. He enters his tent and discovers that Rebecca has been taken, prompting him to prepare to go after her. Meanwhile, Steve and Mr. Tiny invade Darren's home and unleash chaos on his parents. As Darren takes the lift to his house, he sees a flyer for the freak show with a message inviting him to come. Krepsley receives Darren's departure message and begins to prepare for the upcoming fight. He equips himself with his leather brace and knives borrowed from Alexander and Ramos. With determination, he heads towards the theater where Darren is reunited with his family and witnesses Rebecca being hung by ropes. Steve appears on stage and is happy to see Darren, but their insecurities lead to an argument that turns into a physical fight. Steve throws Darren into the craters, but Krepsley arrives and joins in a brawl with Murloff. Darren engage in a fierce battle. Rebecca suddenly entangles herself and rushes to offer him her blood. After much contemplation, Darren decides to take a sip from her shoulder to strengthen and revive himself. Meanwhile, Krepsley's situation worsens as Murloff relentlessly attacks him, ultimately stabbing him. However, Darren arrives just in time to save Krepsley, who seizes the opportunity to stab Murloff in the heart, killing him instantly. The boys then engage in a brutal fight causing chaos throughout the hall until Mr. Tiny intervenes and invites them to join him. Steve agrees, but Darren refuses. Mr. Tiny then reveals his powers by reviving Murloff and transforming him into a small creature, inspiring Steve to join him. Meanwhile, with Krepsley's help, Darren erases his family's memories and returns to the Cirque, where he wins the vote and becomes a part of the camp. In the closing scenes of the movie, we observe Darren approaching Krepsley engaging in a conversation about their current reality. Subsequently, we are shown Darren being gifted his own coffin, symbolizing a peaceful rest for the next century. I thought I was dead.